This is a quick video showing the WNBA one sample t-test example using the updated version of JASP. So this is using version 0.16.3 of JASP. So I'm going to start by opening the data set. So I'll click where it says so open a data file and take JASP for a spin. I'm going to look up where I've saved the data set, which is in my downloads. I'm going to select it and open. And here's my data. So here we have the heights of 11 WNBA players in inches. So since 60 inches is 5 feet, that means we can see, for example, this bottom player, number 11, is 5 foot 9. Uh, this first player is 6 foot. 72 inches is 6 feet tall. Okay, so here we have 11 heights. So we are going to do a one sample t test, and we want to test against the heights of all women in the US. And we know from the problem that the average height, the mean height for all women in the US, that population distribution is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 64.8 inches. So we want to see whether this sample of WNBA players is significantly different in terms of height from the general population of US women. So we want to compare against the value that we have, 64.8 inches. <clears throat> so we'll come over here to our JASP, and we want to use the t-test menu. So select it. We're using the classical options in this class, and we'll be using for this problem the one sample t-test. Now the reason this is a one sample t-test is because we only have one sample, right? We have one sample of 11 players, and we're comparing this one sample against a known population mean of 64.8. So we'll go to our one sample t-test. We only have the one variable here that we're interested in, right? So we're gonna move inches, height in inches to our variables box. And we need to do one more thing here. So we need to come down to where it says test value. And we need to change this test value. It's testing to see whether the heights of this sample are significantly different from a height of zero. So we need to change this to match what we have from our problem, 64.8. So instead of zero, we will put 64.8. And I'll go ahead and make this larger. And when we do that, you'll see the numbers update here. And we see our T value is 7.973. We have 10 degrees of freedom because we had a sample size of 11. And 11 minus 1 is 10. And our P value is less than 0 0.001. So this means that our p-value is very, very, very small. It's 0 0.000 something. It's so small that it's almost 0. It's so small it's less than 0 0.001. So it's very small. We can also, under additional statistics, we can select for descriptives. And this will show us our how many we have in our sample, which we know is 11. Our average for our sample, our mean, is 71.545. Our standard deviation is 2.806. So this means that those 11 players, they are spread out around the mean by about 2.8 inches on average. And we can see the standard error. So now we know the standard error is referring to the standard deviation 
of this sampling distribution. So if we were to sketch out the sampling distribution, we know how spread out those means are. And then we'll just go ahead and ignore this one here, coefficient of variation. We can also see a descriptive plot, which will show us where our sample is compared to the average that we put in, that we were comparing against. We can see that our sample is much higher than that average for all US women. One other thing that we may want here that we'll talk about more in the future is effect size. <clears throat> so when you select for effect size, it adds up here Cohen's D. Cohen's D is a way for us to quantify how big of a difference we're seeing. Is it a really small difference? Is it a medium difference? Is it a large difference? A Cohen's D of 2.404 is a very large difference. So we would say that based on this sample of randomly selected WNBA players, uh, based on this randomly selected sample, uh, we conclude that the heights of WNBA players are significantly much higher, much taller than U.S. women in general.